things are isotopes if they're the same element with different numbers of neutrons. Um, so here, there are three isotopes of hydrogen. If you look in the periodic table, besides the atomic numbers, which they have up above, they also have numbers below each element, right? And the elements that are below, the numbers below are the masses. For example, for hydrogen, you can see the mass is 1.008, and then helium is 4.003, and then lithium is 6.941, 9.012, so those are the masses. Now, there's something that's a little bit weird about that. You might ask, it seems like the masses should all be integers, right? If a proton has a mass of 1 and a neutron has a mass of 1, then it seems like the only possible masses are integers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So how do they get weird numbers like 24.31? Or um, uh, not all of them are that weird, or 47.88? Well, the reason is that what they're doing is, remember that many of these elements exist in nature in many different isotopes. Many of the elements exist in nature in many different isotopes. And so what they're doing is they're averaging together the different isotopes to find what the average weight is. Um, they're averaging them together to find uh, the average weight. So for example, just to take, uh, let's see, one example here, say magnesium. Magnesium is 24.31. Uh, well, maybe that's because one of the isotopes of magnesium has a mass of 24, and maybe the other um, isotope has a mass of 25. I don't know what the real answers are. I just made those up. But if there were some masses of 24 and some of 25, and then they took a weighted average of those, maybe the weighted average would be 24.31. So the, um, the, the mass numbers that you get from the periodic table are the masses, um, are the average masses that you would actually find in nature of all the isotopes. If you look at hydrogen, I think that they gave that the mass of hydrogen was like 1.008. So it's almost the same as this mass. It's only a little bit bigger, and the reason is Almost all of the isotopes in nature are hydrogen-1. There's only a tiny fraction that's hydrogen-2, and an even smaller fraction that's hydrogen-3. So these get very little weight in the weighted average. Almost all the weight goes to here, so it's only a, a tiny smidgen above the number 1. Uh, but some of the other masses are, are, are a lot farther from the integers. OK, good. So, um, so we've gone through the masses. Protons have a mass of one atomic mass unit. Um, neutrons have a mass of one atomic mass unit. And electrons have a mass of about zero atomic mass units. Okay, on the other hand, in, in real life, you're not usually dealing with just one proton, right? In real life, you usually have billions or billions, billions and billions of protons. So it would be more useful to be able to deal with a lot of protons at the same time. Um, so we need uh, to have, uh, say, some big number that we can refer to. Have, have you heard of the concept of a mole? Do you know what a mole is? All right, so the, a mole is just a very big number. A mole is a big number. Uh, have you heard of the word dozen? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what, what is the word dozen? There's nothing mysterious or weird about the word dozen. It's just the word for the number 12, right? The word dozen is just a special word that was invented for the number 12. Well, the word mole is pretty much just a special number for the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So just like the word dozen, means, well, it doesn't mean approximately 12, it means exactly 12. A dozen is exactly 12. Well, it turns out that a mole is a, 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 is a great big number. I'm not going to write out the full number, but it's approximately 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, now, of course, this is a huge number, because 10 to the 23rd means, I guess, uh, about uh, 23 zeros after the 6. All right, but it's the same as the dozen. And it's just because um, it's useful to have a big number because when, when you're working with an actual chemical sample, it's not going to have just one proton or two protons or even a dozen protons. It's going to have like 10 to the 23 protons. It's going to have a huge number of protons. So and rather than saying that we have, say, um, rather than saying all the time that we have, 10, uh, we have 8 times 10 to the 23rd protons or um, 8 times 10 to the 24th protons, it would be better to say how many moles of protons we have. 
Just like when you go to the store to buy eggs, you don't say, oh, I went to the store and I bought three, 36 eggs. You say, I went to the store and I bought three dozen eggs. This is just easier to work with dozens. Uh, so uh, this would be approximately equal to this. This is what's called Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And it's just a conveniently huge number that uh, is appropriate for when you're working with um, atoms and some atomic particles. All right, uh, now it turns out, remember that we said that one proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit. Well, remember, you're not usually going to have one proton in real life. Um, you're going to have, um, and uh, you're going to have a mole, uh, maybe of protons. One mole of protons. So the abbreviation for mole is just M-O-L. So it's not very abbreviated. That's the abbreviation for a mole. And it turns out that one mole of protons would have a mass of, well, do you remember, what, what's the, the typical unit that we measure mass in? What type of units would we use to measure mass? Kilograms. Yeah, kilograms are the standard unit. But in chemistry, a lot of the time they don't use kilograms, a lot of the time they use grams. So that's what we're going to do here. It turns out that one mole of protons has a mass of one gram. So just like one proton has a mass of one atomic mass unit, one mole of protons has a mass of one gram. Why does it come out so evenly? Well, they purposely picked this number so that this would come out to have a mass of exactly one gram. They purposely picked this huge number because this is the number of protons that you need to have a mass of exactly one gram. So that means that the, um, that, uh, okay. So that means that, um, let's see. All right. So if something has a mass of one AMU, then one mole of that thing has a mass of one gram. Remember, um, what was the mass of a neutron in AMUs? So what would be the mass of one mole of neutrons? Still just one mole, so it should still be one gram. Uh, let's look up say uh, carbon. Let's say that we have one carbon in the periodic table. What's the mass of one carbon atom according to the periodic table? Twelve point oh one. That's right. And remember, all we have to do is just look at that bottom number, because the bottom number is the mass. The bottom number is the mass. Right. It's the, uh, the average mass of carbons in nature. OK. So on average, one carbon atom would have a mass of one atomic mass unit. Why is it just exactly 12? Well, there must be some isotopes that have masses of greater than 12, and they're slightly bringing up the average. But the periodic table tells us that one carbon atom would have a mass of 12.01 atomic mass units. Um, so what would be the mass of one mole of carbon, uh, carbon atoms? Twelve what? Twelve grams. Yeah, that's right. Not twelve atomic mass units anymore, because this is a way more carbons than before. So again, you can uh, actually I shouldn't say twelve. It would be twelve point oh one grams, uh, because if if this was carbon that was taken from nature, it would be a mixture of carbons that have a mass of twelve and maybe carbons that have masses of thirteen and fourteen. We can see that the great majority must have a mass of 12, because this is very close to 12. But there must be some that have masses of greater than 12 that are bringing up the average. So again, you can see that the, this number here has been cleverly chosen to make it very easy to work with the units. So that the numerical value for the atomic mass units is going to be the same as the numerical value for the number of grams in a mole. So that makes our life easier when we're working with, um, with chemistry.